let's go. Let's go. Let's go for this. The first question I got for you guys, and this is really for the entire panel and anyone that wants to start it off, maybe we can start with you, Ed, since just because you're on the end and we can move around is January 6, 2021. Was it an insurrection? And before you answer, before you answer, I want to read this. This is, um, this is actually what the, it's called 18 U.S. Code 2383, Rebellion or Insurrection. Yeah, let me do an overhead shot. This is right out of Cornell Law here. Excellent. All right, I'm going to start reading this. This is according to uh, the U.S. Code. Whoever incites, sets on foot, assists, or engages in any rebellion or insurrection against the authority of the United States or the laws thereof, or gives aid or comfort thereto, shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than 10 years or both, and shall be incapable of holding any office under the United States. It technically doesn't define insurrection. It's the code talking about what, what I guess, what an insurrection is. Of course, they use the word insurrection in the actual code itself. But what do you think? Do you guys think it was an insurrection? So I, I personally believe it was an insurrection. Um, and I base that on the fact that 20 court decisions called it an insurrection. And the fact that there was a bill passed in the Senate that called, called them a mob of insurrectionists. I think the bill passed, or it was in the House of Representatives, 406 to 21. Uh, that was a statute to award the police officers medals. And it referred to these, uh, these individuals as insurrectionists. So, I mean, I think the term can be su subjective. I think, you know, people can say nobody was charged with violating Section 2383 of Title 18, which is insurrection and uh, insurrection and rebellion statute and nobody was right but i don't think that defines whether the event was an insurrection when i say insurrection I, I don't mean everybody there was partaking in insurrection there are people who were peaceful people who the people who walked into the capitol and did nothing i don't think that they were insurrectionists i think they violated the law but i don't think they were partaking in insurrection. I do think the Proud Boys were partaking in insurrection. I think you could say Donald Trump incited the insurrection. I do. What, De Destiny, what do you think, man? Uh, I would say the plot from start to finish is quite obviously an insurrection. The only way to get around that is to either justify an insurrection, which is what most conservatives do, they don't realize it, or to deny that an insurrection could ever happen. Or, or if you're not aware of all the facts of what happened. I think that Donald Trump and his cronies had a very coherent plan that they tried to enact from start to finish, starting with false claims of voter fraud, leading to false slates of electors that filed themselves as state electors under perjury, which is what they did, up to the violence that happened on the day of the, in a, um, on the day of the certification of the vote, where Donald Trump and his friends continued to try to delay the peaceful transfer of power by contravening the certification of the Electoral College vote. And what I, I want to make sure that we don't force this into like what they want to call a debate, debate where you got to be wait to called on or be called on or anything. So if any of you guys, Glenn, you as well, man, if any of you guys want to jump in. Yeah, they, the two of them just went, I, I, I want Glenn to go, but I just want to say, I just want to pause to say that seems like a giant mistake. Oh, what he just said? Absolutely. Yeah. It's like, no, seriously, make them wait to be called. Yeah, like, this was going so well. It was going well. The first two people and already the 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 moderator's just like, this is boring. Like you guys need to start interrupting each other. Yeah, like exactly. a conversation with these guys needs less law and order, I think. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like uh, I I mean, they have a I mean, honestly, I I think ideally, if they're all going to be in the same room, they should be in separate soundproof booths, so their, their their volume could just be cut off instantly if they start talking with their nuts. Yeah. That's the way you do it. That's the way you do it. Yeah. At the very least, don't tell them that like they could just go nuts. Like, yeah, please doing? jump in, and interrupt, please. This awesome. is too civil. <laughs> Say something here. I was there. And I was investigated and subpoenaed by the Justice Department in at least five criminal investigations. And I was forced to testify in front of the Jan 6 committee, which they've now been destroying their records because the records show the opposite of what they said. Trump and all of us had a stage rented by the Supreme Court. He was supposed to have another rally there. We showed up before Trump ever finished his speech. People were getting tear gas and hit by bullets. And there were a bunch of provocateurs leading an attack against the police and they broke through. And then this million plus people then got blamed as insurrectionist and Biden gave a big speech yesterday saying they're all terrorists. So by, by, by that extension, Kamala Harris as, as the VP candidate 
was bailing people out of jail that burned down police stations and firebombed federal buildings. So, so and, and, the, and the idea of Biden's speech yesterday, making his whole campaign about January 6th, saying political violence is never good. The, the Democrats are the ones that call for political violence. So I was there with a bullhorn. I could only reach 100 yards out when the tear gas was hitting me, saying, don't go in, don't fight the police. This is a setup. And we have hundreds of videos. And so regardless of what the left tries to do, they're all out there of people taking off their Antifa stuff and putting on the 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 uh, Trump garb and, and and the police fake arresting people, attacking them and then high fiving them. I mean, this has all come out in the new footage and it's all getting Wait, fake arresting them. How were they fake? They would grab them and arrest them and then drag them in and then high five, them. you know, take the handcuffs off and high five them. Those videos, what people are taking everything I say, they're going to put it on X and show what I said. That's where we dominate. Yeah, yeah, and, I, and so and so and so, and so what I'm getting at it. Let me just let, let me let me tell you this. What I'm getting at here is they now admit hundreds of federal officers were there. So when Trump started his speech, this whole thing began with Ray Epps saying, go into the Capitol. He told the Jan 6 committee, yeah, it's true. It's in his text messages. He told family, I orchestrated it. So under pressure, they finally indicted him, but only recommend six months. So a, a few hundred people got manipulated into fighting the police. That They were led and driven by provocateurs and other groups. They were others. Then they opened the doors and the police wave them in in hundreds of videos. They walk between the velvet ropes and then they indict over a thousand people that just walked through velvet ropes. And, and then now we're told in the national security directive of President Biden, the number one threat is the American people. And he had a declaration of war yesterday against all Trump supporters and says to protect democracy, we're not gonna let you vote for Trump. So as Stalin said, I care not who casts the votes, I care who counts them. Well, Biden doesn't care who casts the votes, he cares who's allowed on the ballot. So we've already won, no one's buying this. And and, and when this happened three years ago, the, the Wall Street Journal had to print a retraction, but they said I was there as a coward telling people to attack. Well, no, they wouldn't let me put the video on Twitter before I was saying, don't go in. But the truth is, it's coming out. And and so so that's the bottom line here. And, and this attempt by Biden to cast the American people as the enemy in all these movies about martial law and civil war and race war, that's their only hope because, because the, the corrupt, evil Democratic Party, and it's evil twin, the Republicans, they've lost power and populism is rising. Quite frankly, this was not an insurrection. It was an insurrection that would have been guns. And it's in the Declaration of Independence that it's our right and duty to get rid of a government that's destructive of what the people want. But I'm not calling for violence. We're winning this politically, but we're being cast as about to be violent in the next 10 months because all these indictments and all these attacks to not let Americans vote for who they want aren't working and are backfiring. And all the big Democrat lawyers now admit it. Axelrod admits it. Carville admits it. They all admit this attempt like we're in Venezuela or something, to take Trump off the ballot when he's never been convicted of insurrection. This is a military tribunal, U.S. code, from the Civil War. If a military tribunal found you were guilty of being involved in insurrection, that meant after the war ended... Can I ask you a question? Run for Alex, that, that, Alex that can I ask you a question? It. Yeah. So do you think the Confederates during the Civil War were partaking in insurrection? I, I, I mean, in, in retrospect, because I wasn't alive then, I, I think the South got manipulated into that. I you know, I was just thinking after that, like, psychotic gish gallop that we just heard of, like, every talking point that he could think of, you know, uh, all, like, melded together for five minutes. Um uh, that whichever Krasenstein that was, I, I refuse to to figure out which one of them is which. Uh, that that guy was making like the weakest possible objection, right? It was like there's such a bad response, right? There's there's so many things you could have said here, but like one seems like Alex sort of anticipated it, right? At the end of what he was saying, two there are all kinds of obvious things he could say about like oh come on are you gonna you know compare you know are you gonna compare like a you know few hundred boomers most of you know most of whom you know didn't have weapons with them you know like rampaging around the capital to like this this actual army you know rising up in rebellion again you know like there's so many like there, it was such a bad it was such a bad objection there were so many good ways that alex could have responded to it but it's fucking alex jones 
And instead of doing any of that, he just reaches <laughs> towards the most insane possible. <laughs> yeah i know immediately you're like i had the same thought i remember like just like oh man that's not even a good setup and then of course alex jones is like well i don't you know i don't think that uh it's like i personally i personally think they were baited into it you know like, what? <laughs> like, uh... yeah no it's it's like oh I, i'm not sure i wasn't alive yet but it seems like gettysburg was a false flag <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, it's okay insane. You have been watching free public content from Give Them an Argument. To access every single episode of the show, the main show on uh, Monday nights, all of the streams, all of the uh, debate breakdowns, all of the patron-exclusive post games on Monday nights, all of the patron-exclusive bonus episodes every week, and much, much more, go to patreon.com slash Ben Burgess. I cannot resist ending this with, don't be foolish. <laughs>